सो हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरी वन सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस टॉप फाइव क्वेश्चन ऑन एरेज सो ईच एंड एवरी क्वेश्चन हैव बीन पिकड अप बाई मी इन सच अ वे दैट दे विल हेल्प यू टू लर्न एंड अंडरस्टैंड न्यू एल्गोरिदम्स एंड वेरिएशन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन हैव ऑलरेडी बीन आज इन इंटरव्यूज सो अलॉन्ग विद द क्वेश्चन आई एल बी डिस्कसिंग द हिंट्स एंड आई वॉन्ट एवरी वन टू ट्राई द अप्रोच ऑन योर ओन एंड मेक श्योर दैट यू शेयर द सोल्यूशन इन द कमेंट सेक्शन एज वेल सो लेट स्टार्ट सो द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज लीडर्स इन एन एरे सो लेट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अंडरस्टैंड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट सो इन द क्वेश्चन यू विल बी गिवन एन एरे ऑफ पॉजिटिव इंटीजर्स एंड योर टास्क इज टू फाइंड द लीडर्स इन द एरे सो वॉट इज अ लीडर एन एलिमेंट ऑफ एन एरे इज लीडर इफ इट इज ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू ऑल द एलिमेंट्स ऑन इट्स राइट हैंड साइड सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल सो ओवर हेयर आई हेव टेकन द सेम एग्जाम्पल विच इज गिवन टू अस इन द इनपुट सो नाव ओवर हेयर leaders means let's say if array of i i want to call it as a leader then all the elements on its right hand side should be lesser than or equal to the current element i so over here let's try to find out all the leaders in this given array so can i say 16 to be a leader i need all the elements to be lesser than or equal to on its right hand side but 17 is present and it is not lesser than 16 so can i say 17 to be a leader yes all the elements are lesser than or equal to 17 on its right hand side can i say 4 to be a leader no can i say 3 to be a leader no can i say 5 to be a leader yes all the elements are lesser than or equal to and now what about 2 nothing is present on the right hand side of 2 so now obviously 2 is going to be a leader so you have to output all the leaders hence the output comes out to be 17 5 and 2 for this question so now in order to solve this question let me share you the hint what you can do you can keep track of a maximum variable okay and start the traversal of this entire array from right to left so let's see if you started the traversal in this manner right to left and initialize the maximum variable as the last element and always the last element is going to be the leader right and whenever you find a maximum element just make sure to list it down inside your list or add it into your list so now next element is 5 can you see 5 to be greater than maximum yes so update maximum and make a note inside your list so the next element is 3 ignore 4 not greater than 5 17 is greater than 5 so update the maximum and update the list as well and what about the last element 16 it is not greater than 17 right so do not include so these are your leaders and now you can print down them in the reverse manner so this is leaders in an array so now let's see the next question the next question is sort an array of zeros ones and twos so this question is very interesting and the algorithm you are required to solve this question is very much useful in many different variations of this question so let's understand so in this question you will be given an array which will be containing either 0 1 or 2 and your target is to sort the array so now let's try to understand with the help of an example so let's say if this is your given array which contains 0 2 1 2 and 0 so now if you want to sort after sorting the array will look like this 0 0 1 2 2 and they are sorted in ascending order or increasing order now you might be wondering this is very easy to sort right so you'll be thinking of using any of the sorting algorithm and you can directly use that sorting algorithm no but let's say if you want to sort this entire array in order of n so how can you do that so for that what you can do you can think of this entire array in terms of three different partitions let's say the first partition will con contain and it is going by the name p1 it will be containing all the zeros partition 2 will contain only ones and partition 3 that will be the last partition will contain all the twos so now you can try to divide the entire array into three different partitions with the help of some pointers and those pointers you will be swapping the elements between those pointers and you will be placing them either in partition 1 partition 2 or partition 3 respectively based on their values right 0 1 and 2 so try to solve this question on your own that was the end for this question and let me give you one more extra hint that in order to solve this question in order of n there is a very famous algorithm that goes by the name dutch national fag algorithm you can read about that algorithm and try to implement this question with the help of that dnf algorithm so now let's see the next question the third question is count more than n by k occurrences there can be many different variations of this question which can be asked to you in the interview so let's understand the question So in the question, you will be given an array of size n, and an element will be given that is k. So what is your target? The task is to find all the elements in the array whose frequency is greater than n by k. And you know the division can be in decimal as well, but over here the division is an integer division. So always the occurrences will be an integer value. So let's understand with the help of an example. So in this question, let's say n is equal to eight, 
and the array elements are this array elements right and now k value given to you was 4 so what is n by k n by k is nothing but 8 by 4 and the integer value comes out to be 2 so now we have to find out all the elements which are having frequencies greater than 2 mark my point greater than 2 it's not greater or equal to 2 right so let's find out the frequency of every element so 3 how many times it is occurring i can see 1 2 and 3 3's frequency is 3 what is the frequency of 1 its frequency is 2 and what is the frequency of 2 the frequency of 2 is 3 so now how many elements are occurring more than twice i can see 3 and 2 are occurring more than twice right so in the output you have to find out what is the count of those elements i can see two elements hence the output comes out to be 2 so that was the question now in order to solve this question there is a moore's voting algorithm you can read out read out that algorithm and try to solve this question on your own i mentioned that there can be many different variations of this question right so let's say if you are giving an interview and the interview will ask you that given an array try to find out all the elements that are occurring more than n by 2 number of times or they can give you try to find out all the elements that are occurring n by 3 number of times they can give you different values of k and, and place it inside the uh, formula n by k and they can ask a, a variation of this question so try to solve this question on your own with the help of moore's voting algorithm so now let's see the next question the next question is a very famous algorithm that is Cadence algorithm. If you have learned arrays and if you haven't done this algorithm, then you are missing the most important part of arrays. So let's understand the question. So in the question, you will be given an array of n integers. And what you have to do, you have to find the contiguous subarray which has the maximum sum and return its sum. You have to simply return the maximum subarray sum. So let's understand with the help of an example. So let's say this is the entire array. Now we have to find out a subarray which is having maximum sum. So how can you do that? You can find out all the subarrays. We know what is a subarray, right? So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. You can call 1, 2, 3, minus 2 as a subarray. And you can try out all the subarrays and find the sum of every subarray. So let's say you got a list of subarrays S1, S2, S3, and these are the sum of the subarrays and SK. And among all this value, you have to find out the maximum subarray sum. That is the maximum element of the sum and that will be your output. So now if I focus on the entire array that contains every element, the sum will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 and minus 2. So this gets eliminated plus 5. So this will be giving you some equal, equivalent to 9. Over here, inside the array, there can be a mixture of positive, negative and 0 as well. So let's say if all the elements were positive, then it was very simple. Just get the sum of the entire array. But now, how will you solve this question? So in order to solve this question, the name of the question itself suggests an algorithm that is Cadence algorithm. And if you try to solve this question with the help of an Cadence algorithm, you are capable of achieving the time complexity order of n. Right? So try to learn about Cadence algorithm. But before watching the entire algorithm, try to solve it on your own. So now let's see the next question. So the next question is smallest positive missing number. This question is a very interesting question and you will be learning a very interesting technique to solve this question. So whenever you try this question, you will be able to learn the optimization which you can give on space. So you will be learning a technique that is called bucketing technique and that will help you to optimize the space. So let's understand the problem statement. So in the question, you will be given an array of n integers and including zero. The task is to find the smallest positive missing number, right? So let's understand with the help of a test case. So inside this array, you have to find out the smallest positive missing number. So how can you do? We know that the positive number starts from one, right? So let's check whether one is present or not. Yes, one is present. So let's see the next positive number, two. So now iterate or let's say find the entire array, whether two is present. No, two is not present. Hence, you got your output to be two. And the output for this test case comes out to be two. So now, how will you solve this question in a better manner? So if you want to solve this question, what you can do? First of all, you can keep the track of all the positive numbers, whether they are present or not. For each and every positive number, go through the entire array and check whether it is present or not. Right? But that is a brute force approach. Now, if you want to solve this question in a very efficient manner, that is, let's say, time complexity order of n and no auxiliary space is required. Right? So what you can do? You can use the index value in order to mark whether that element is present or not. We know that the smallest positive number starts from 1. And let's say if all the positive smallest numbers are present inside an array. That means all the numbers from 1 to n will be present, right? And the next positive element is going to be n plus 1. So what I'll be doing, this 0 will be capable of storing the 
identity whether one is present inside the array or not and how will you mark whether element is present or not you will simply mark the element which is already present at that specific index with a negative sign let's say over here at the index number one let's say 17 was present now i want to mark whether two is present or not so i'll be going to the index number one and i'll be marking if i found two inside the array i'll be marking the 17 as negative so after doing that you'll be capable of finding out a technique okay so this is the way or this is the condition i'm able to figure out that element is missing inside this array so try to solve all these questions on your own so that was it for today's video if you really enjoyed this video then do not forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends and if you are looking for such an interesting content then do subscribe to this channel thank you